Hello everyone, it's Robin Carter with Robin's Creations and I'm out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to show you a fun technique with the lovely and lasting bundle that includes this punch, which is the lasting label punch. So just a tip what I do is I write the name of it on here because it's not anywhere when it comes from Stampin' Up. And then I also put whether it's a coordinating die or a coordinating punch, I put a label here to say uh, what that coordinates with. Not that this is just limited to this set, but it just helps me when I'm pulling stuff out to remind myself what the name of the die and or punch is. I do tend to store my dies all in alphabetical order, so not with the stamp set because they can be used with other things, especially if they just have labels. Anyway, let me welcome everyone that has subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for your subscription. And if you are new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button below. And if you like this video later on, give me a thumbs up. So here is the card I wanna share with you today. So, and the technique I'm gonna share with you uh, is mainly this stamp. So I was interested to see if that would work with our Stamparatus in the hinge using the hinge stamping and it works perfectly. As you can see, I created this background just with this stamp. So that's what we're going to do today. So let me show you how that works. I have all my supplies here ready to go. So I'm gonna start with my paper. Now at the end, I'm gonna trim it down to four by five and a quarter, but I started out with a full uh, A5 piece that is four and a quarter by five and a half. That way I have room to trim and I don't have to worry about blank spaces with this stamp. So I have my stamp apparatus here and I love the deluxe mat. I have a video on how I love that as well. You can stamp on it, erase it, plus it gives you the grid marks uh, for photopolymer stamps like the uh, it does for the rubber stamps. So I also made me myself a shim, and this is just from some paper, the paper pumpkin uh, backing that they use, and I just cut it like to one inch, and that's so because uh, you don't want to stamp real close to the edges here because of this hinge and the uh, the distance here. It doesn't give you a lot of room to press and get a good image with your stamps. So I use that when I'm wanting to get um, closer up. So I'm gonna put my paper here. Actually, I'm gonna turn it this way so we can hinge longer. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this off so you can see what I do. So this is the, I guess it's kind of a tile and I'm gonna set it right up against that and have it go off just a little bit so that I get a full tile at the top. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick it up and I do have my flower here, which I've already stamped, but I like to leave it there. Okay, so the color I used on this is gray granite. And you can see that here. I did make one previously with my ink spot and obviously my ink spot needs re-inked because it's not near as dark as the uh, one over here. So I thought I would just go ahead and use my full ink pad. And then I'm going to set this over here. Let me get this more in view so that I have a level inking. That makes this, if you put a stamp pad under here, it makes this level so that you can ink it better and not make quite a mess. See, I don't have that all the way in. So I want to stick my paper there. And just for good measure, because the photopolymers are sticky, and they tend to um, grab your paper and pull them back up until they've been used for a while. So I'm gonna get a piece of scotch tape and I'm gonna run it on my arm a little bit so it's not quite so sticky and I'm gonna stick it on the edge of this paper to help fold it down. All right, so let me re-ink again. And of course that's in the way of my flower. I could take that off and put it back on, but I just haven't. All right, and that gives us a nice uh, border there. I hope that was 
That was maybe not lined up. I'm going to turn this over and start again. Okay. In the corner. Because you want it to be in the corner lined up or this won't work. Okay. Okay, we have a good impression there. So I'm going to realign it. See how it sticks it up, picks up the paper. Now for the next one, you're going to hinge this down. So to for the hinge to work, you don't you can't pull it off straight. You have to put your plate straight up, and then I'm going to hinge it down, and we're going to re-ink it again. Okay. And look at that, it works perfectly. I was so glad that that worked that way. And you can use, that way you can make a background in any color you prefer. So my paper has moved a little bit. I'm gonna re-put it back down. That's the main thing you have to remember. So we're gonna hinge down again, is keep that paper in the same spot. And hopefully I've done that. There we go. So I don't know why <laughs> it picks. My tape obviously need more than one little piece of tape to hold it. Okay, so now we're gonna hinge down again. Ink, stamp. Hope I got that all inked. Did, put it back in the corner. Now, when you get to these last two hinges, your uh, plate can move uh, more freely and be a little off. So when, you, when you're closing it, you just want to try to keep it in the hinge and stamp. Let's see how that, that one did good. So one more, and this one's going to be really <laughs> hard to keep on there. The last one is the one that's a little tricky because it's only held on by two hinges. So try to do your best to get it flat and then stamp down. That did okay. It's a little off, but like I said, I'm going to trim and I don't think someone's going to say, oh, that's completely off. So I have a little bit here on my mat. So I'm just going to take a wet paper towel that I have and wipe that off. And so now we're ready to do the next line. And this is where my little shim here will come in handy. So I'm gonna move this stamp. Now I may have to get my head or pull this closer to me. I hope I can still keep it in the camera. So now you wanna line this up with the other. And since I know I started with it pressed against that, I know that way. Now I just need to know here if that's going to line up in the hinge or with the little markings. So I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to get just a piece of acetate out. Got a little water or something on that, but hopefully the ink will cover it. So I'm going to get a piece of acetate out here so that I can stamp on it and see if it's lined up. And if not, I can move it. So let's ink that up. Press that down, and my acetate stuck to the stamp, but it's there. And I think that's pretty lined up. I don't know if that shows. The acetate ink is kind of just kind of puddles on the acetate, but I'm, I'm we're going to see if that works, and hopefully it does. Wipe that off so I don't get it all over everything, and let's give this a go. doesn't look real inked up. Let me try again. And if I, I think I said, but this is gray granite that I'm using. I think it'd be beautiful in a lot of colors. Just depending on, and look, I did. That lined up perfectly. So that's good. Now we can start our hinge. So I'm going to take it down one. Ink it up. Press. 
and so what do you guys think about this that I haven't seen this done on all my searches so I thought I would do a video to show how to use this stamp obviously you could just do a line of it or uh, Oops, I didn't get it all inked. So we're gonna do that one again. Again, the beauty of the Stamparatus is it stays in the same spot. I just worry when it starts getting further down that it may not be. Okay, now we're down to the tricky ones where you can see it kind of wants to move. So I just try to stick it straight up and putting more pressure on the top and bring it straight down. That one is a little darker because I re-inked it and I had tape on. Now I gotta get my tape off. And I cut my fingernails so I don't have nails. This one I didn't cut. Okay, a little boo-boo there. We'll re-ink this one. They do get a little darker when you re-ink them. I could get out my spot and just try to get the spots I missed. This one's going to be real tricky because it's on the edge. That worked out well. And the last one here. Okay. So what do you guys think? I love that that worked out and I think it's so pretty. I can see using that in blue. A nine of navy, grays, even black, I think would be stunning. So here is our sheet that we made full of that pattern. And I think as it dries, this will kind of blend or it'll get covered up a little bit when I put on the flowers for our finished card. So let me put the stamp apparatus away. And now this is why I made it bigger because now I'm going to trim along the top and the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to do this bottom because it has the pattern. So I'm going to cut this to five and a quarter off to the side here. Okay, so that got rid of that white. And now I'm going to trim this to four inches. Actually, what I'm going to do to try to get rid of this is trim this um, as close as I can and then cut a little off the other side. I'm not sure that's going to work. Okay, so now I have trimmed it down. I'm gonna get out a card base and feel for which side. I think it's this side. It's just a hair bigger. And here we have our pattern. So I have already stamped the flower image. I used uh, soft sea foam, and then these are in flirty flamingo. So that's what I do when I have a flower set that's all one stamp. As I just cut, uh, do one in the flower color and usually put the green one on, straight on, what I'm gonna do. And then I piece these on top of where the flower goes. So let's adhere that. I'm gonna get my Tombow glue, which I have put in this fine chip bottle. I love doing that. It really helps me not make a mess. And I'm just gonna line this up with there that is. I look for that little flower piece. Set that on top. And I have this one. Here. And I look for this little different colored or different shaped petal. Put that one there. Then I have my two little buds. 
So I just fussy cut these out of one and I'm going to need to fussy cut the other. I did the first one for time's sake for you guys. And I know a lot of you, when I, you hear the word fussy cut, you're like, oh, yuck. If you didn't want to do this ne next step, I think this is fine with the flowers flat. But I wanted to give a little dimension to the flowers. Plus, I cut off too much of the petal there, so that'll cover that up next time. I'll remember to do that. So I'm going to get my paper snips, and we're going to begin cutting. And it's really not that difficult. Just move your paper versus your scissors and cut around. Now, sometimes what I do is when I get to this next part, well, that's real close to the flower, so I'm going to continue waving. But when I get to here to get rid of all this other paper, I'm not having to turn it so much. I just cut that off. And now I just have this little bit to work with. I do love these Stampin' Up! snips. I have a lot of other scissors. Finally invested in these. And it has a really fine point and it cuts really well. And they have a nice cover to protect the point when you're sticking it in your drawer or, or organizer. So there's one petal. All right, I'm going to work on this one. So this one, I'm going to go around where it attaches. And again, you can cut that off so you don't have to deal with the whole thing. I'm glad here in Texas it's a little cooler. We've been just getting up to 90 versus 100 and something. And I'm like, it's about time. <laughs> it's already almost October. Okay. Now these other two, I'm going to just get that out for me so I can. This one I have to be careful and not cut off that petal. So I'm going to come in. I did those last night. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. Like I said, these flowers are pretty easy to fussy cut. They're not real detailed. And y'all know I do have a, if you've watched any of my others, I do have a scan and cut. But since these flowers have openings, I would have to go in and put a pencil mark to close all those flowers and I just decided it'd be easier just to fussy cut because then I'd have to erase all the pencil marks so I just decided I'm going to fussy cut these. I do like to get in the petals Try to make it look like a die. I know we all wish they had dies for everything, don't we? But sometimes it's good to try to cut this off. It's messing with me. To have minimum supplies, this bundle is a good one because it includes a great punch for your labels. So for those of you that don't have the skin, uh, skin and cut and or uh, the stamp, what a, <laughs> I keep wanting to call it the big shot, and it's not the big shot. It's the stamping, boss, uh, cutting and boss machine. That's it. Okay, so I have my flowers cut out, and let's adhere this to the card base. There's where I messed up. I don't remember what I did to mess up. Oh, it wasn't all the way in the corner. No one's gonna know. We're gonna glue that down on the bottom. We're going to adhere that down. Now, I also have some uh, splatter on this one. So I'm going to get out my deluxe mat. And that's another reason why I love the deluxe mat. I obviously didn't clean my stamp. Because you can use it for your photopolymer stamping. Just have to make sure it's dry. Let me get this. Yesterday's wet paper towel is dry. And my flowers. And the little 
uh, splatter stamp is already on the, my small block. And I'm gonna do it in gray granite as well. Just a few to fill in the white spaces. I'm happy with that. Close this up so I don't get it all over. I tend to do that. And then let's do these uh, flowers. So I wanted to give it some dimension. And what I did is I just took my bone folder and I curled the ends of the petals up. You could just put a dimensional on it and raise it up. But I wanted to lay it flat. So I'm going to get my Tombow again. And I'm just putting it in the middle of that flower. And then I'm going to line it up. You could offset it to get, look, make it look like more petals, but I don't know why. I just like the look of that. And you can smash those down after it dries. Oh, curl my petals first. It's much harder to curl them. Um, I've also used my um, pick tool to curve on the round part. Okay, I'm going to put that on the flower. Find that odd shaped little petal right there. Line those up. And this was Flirty Flamingo. I think I said that, but I wanted to be sure. Now this one, I'm just going to curve right on the end. Just kind of curve that up a little bit. And for this, I'm going to put it on the petal. I'm going to turn that one a little bit to hide the, the green. Okay, and let's curve this one up a little bit. And put this right on the petal. So there we go. So it just gives it a little dimension. I'm trying to show that. Okay, and so now we can glue it on. Now, I'm usually a straight kind of girl. You know what, we'll do this one straight. So you can have your uh, options there as far as whether you like it turned or straight. So we'll do this one straight on. Okay, and then I've already punched the sentiment, but let me see if I can find what I did earlier. So this, this punch, and I love that it has a border and these are 85% so that it is quite larger you can see than it actually is but the images to get them all on there they had to make it smaller and here's another thing I did I took the punch look I made a baby one <laughs> isn't it cute it's got a little edge on it from the punch so I punched it right normal and then I stuck it through the center to punch the other side and I made a baby a baby one so just shows you, you can use your punches in multiple different ways you could also just do a half or the baby and if you wanted to mat it you just cut several different ones and then go around so since this is in the center I'm going to put this in the center and then I have the let's see gray granite it just says gray granite um shimmer ribbon so it's in the it's in the catalog available through the stampin up store and i do have a host code which i will put uh in the description box below i appreciate if you do not have a demonstrator that you help support me and uh use the host code so you know what? i'm gonna put no i'm not i'm gonna put a bling there so here is my ribbon saving technique so i get my tear and tape I put some along the side of the label and 
put some along this side. Take that off. And so it's also a ribbon saving technique, but it helps me get these wompy things kind of even. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get my, my ribbon scissors that are sharp. Okay, and so I can put it right where I want it. And I can adjust it in a minute after I get the second one. Okay, and then for this corner, other side where it looks like it's bent, I just bend the ribbon like I want it, cut it, and then, let's see, it looks like it's going that way, I stick it to the adhesive. So there's my uh, technique of how I do that, <laughs> rather than try to uh, actually, that's backwards because you do want to look like this ribbon is over that one. So let's see. Does that help it? No. Yeah, that looks better. See, he's a little curved. Let me separate those a little bit more. So that way you can kind of do it how you want it rather than fuss with the ribbon going forward and backwards. So there we go, and now I'm going to get my dimensionals, a little bucket of dimensionals, and y'all know me, I like to cut them in half. The big ones anyway, if it's smaller ones, I tend to just use them. Put one here. There, there. So it looks like I'm using a lot, but that's really just two and a half. I want one in the middle so it doesn't collapse. And by the way, a lot of people sometimes just put two stamps on there, but when I go to the post office, I get the two ounce stamps, and that helps for any that I want to put the non. Uh, non-machinable on because of all the dimension in our cards. Okay, so there is one minus the bling. Where is my bling? I'll just go ahead and finish it up because um, that way they look similar. Let's see if I can put this one a little higher. And then I like to add a bling in the center of the petal. I should be using my take your pick tool, but fingers work good too sometimes. Okay, so here is our finished card. So this is the one I did ahead of time. And it's uh, Caddy Wampus, and this one is straight on. So anyway, I hope you like this technique using this stamp and this set. Let me know what you think in the description box below. I love reading your comments. Thanks for stopping by today. And again, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Have a great day, everyone.